here we see a lymph node and uh, we can recognize right away that something is not okay with this lymph node. This lymph node is infiltrated by these irregular large nodules. Some of these nodules actually fuse together and uh, we, don't, we do not see normal reactive follicles with sharply outlined germinal centers. And uh, another, thing, another thing we can see even in this uh, low magnification is what we call moth-eaten appearance. It means these lighter areas looks like some moth came and ate part of this lymph node. Uh, so the similar picture can be seen in progressive transformation of germinal centers where uh, that would be caused by um, mantle zones infiltrating the reactive germinal centers. So let's have a look. Uh, why do we see moth-eaten appearance in this case? We can see that most of these cells are actually histiocytes. They have more voluminous cytoplasm and therefore it looks slightly lighter. <clears throat> on Low magnification. But uh, we need to pay closer attention to these atypical cells. These cells look slightly like Hodgkin cells or Reed-Sternberg cells. However, if we use uh, immunohistochemistry, these cells would be negative for CD15 and CD30, and they would be positive for CD20 and for CD45 or for common leukocyte antigen. So these cells are not Hodgkin cells or Reed-Sternberg cells, they are actually B cells. And indeed, in this case, these atypical cells are uh, neoplastic cells and they are actually monoclonal B cells. The other cells are only reactive, mostly, uh, mostly T cells and B cells. And these atypical cells are called popcorn cells and they have uh, multilobated irregular nucleus with vesicular chromatin. Uh, on the nuclei, uh, the nucleoli are not that prominent as in Reed-Sternberg cells or Hodgkin cells. So these cells are also called LH cells or LP cells, like lymphocyte predominant cells. And it means we are looking at lymphocyte predominance or nodular lymphocyte predominance Hodgkin lymphoma. And I would like to cover a, a few more details about these uh, characteristic cells. So I borrowed this picture where these cells are a little bit more characteristic. So classically, um, low-bated nucleus uh, nucleoli there are not the prominent uh, the chromatin is vesicular and these nuclei are surrounded by halo so these cells are called popcorn cells LH cells or uh, LP cells what, <clears throat> what is also very important is to look at these rosette-like structures or ring-like structures where these popcorn cells are um, surrounded by uh, CD30 positive T cells. Um, these rosettes are not visible in uh, differential diagnosis, uh, which is T cell rich large B cell lymphoma, uh, which is the most important differential diagnosis. Um, <clears throat> Also, in the case of T-cell rich large B-cell lymphomas, most of these cells would be uh, T-cells. However, in nodular lymphocytic predominance Hodgkin lymphoma, these cells are CD20 positive B-cells. So most of these cells are B-cells and only cells around these popcorn cells are actually CD3 positive uh, T-cells. They are also positive for CD 57, which helps us to differentiate these two, uh, these two diseases, or these two types of lymphomas. Um, in case of NLPHL, um, the overall structure is nodular, as we saw in the previous picture. In uh, large piece of lymphoma, we usually see diffuse infiltration. However, uh, according to some authors, um, this type of Hodgkin's lymphoma and T-cell-rich 
a large piece of lymphoma is spectrum, so um, this disease can progress to large B-cell lymphoma. And also progressive transformation of germinal centers is sometimes seen in part of the lymph node. And um, according to some theories, um, this is the spectrum where we can see progressive transformation of germinal centers progressing to uh, nodular lymph lymphocyte predominance, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and that could progress to large B-cell lymphoma. So um, uh, that's all about this nice lymph node.